Hello fellow babies and welcome back to the Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Uh, appreciate if you are watching this real time that you are a Patreon patron and uh, we appreciate your continued support. If you're not watching real time, you're getting it a week late on YouTube, then would you please at a minimum link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Uh, instructions are in the description of the show. And if you are not an Amazon Prime member and can't figure out how to do that, um, at a minimum, please follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor. Follow Shane at Dinfire. Follow Sifted at Sifted Games. Our first question from YouTube from Tripper Live. What if Generation 9 consoles must always be connected to the internet? Will it cause an uproar like it did in 2013 or are consumers ready for it now? Was Microsoft just too far ahead of the curve? I cannot imagine why any console maker would ever require that. So yes, it will piss people off. It'll piss me off. Um, I mean, I, I gotta tell you for real, my internet and phone went down a, a, probably a month ago and my home phone is, is from my internet provider. My cell phone, I live at the beach, is, has terrible service here. And so we have a booster that connects the internet so my phone quality is perfect. So when my internet's down, we are out of communication. Nothing works. And our TV has some internet connectivity. It's a pain in the ass. So like the only thing I can do is play video games. There's nothing, I can't listen to Spotify. I can only play video games. And if they took that away from me, I would freaking kill myself. So that would be the dumbest thing they could ever do. Uh, no, Microsoft wasn't ahead of the curve. Microsoft was greedy and stupid, and they're not going to be greedy and stupid again. So I don't think that that is likely. Um, if you have a streaming service, of course you have to be connected to the internet. And, you know, uh, I don't know if people, again, I don't know if people actually have ever done this, but on PlayStation Now, you have a choice. You can stream the game or you can download it. And um, I remember asking Sony, why would anybody download it? And they go, because they have an unstable internet connection and they don't want to be online all the time. And you know, they play on their, their PC, they play on their laptop. And so they want to be able to do that. I totally get that. Um, so no, I think that would be the dumbest thing it could do. I don't think it's going to happen. Microsoft wasn't ahead of the curve. They were greedy and no, you should not have to be on the internet. You should be allowed to be in a cave and just enjoy yourself. All right, our next question from Sifted from Kevin. Which game developer publisher do you think is best at keeping secrets in terms of game announcements? Ubisoft is obviously the worst. I was utterly impressed that Apex was not leaked. I mean, it was leaked by somebody who had hands on the weekend of, you know, of the game launch. And, you know, that's their fault. But, but even then he couldn't really explain it. That blew me away, and I would not have said EA was the best of, of breed in this, but my God, I, that was so impressive. That just came out of nowhere. Um, so, look, if if they want to, it, and it's not EA. I mean, it's like Respawn. How do you have guys work on a game for years? Like hundreds of people. And nobody knew. That blew me away. Um, so, you know. Uh, Nintendo's good. They keep it secret. Yeah, because I mean, I think that's death penalty, you know, if you if you ever release anything. You lose a hand. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's funny to me, like, and and I think this is just who I am, but my wife and I constantly have this argument about presents. Like, my wife likes Christmas presents, and she likes them wrapped up, and she wants them to be a surprise, and it pisses her off if I buy her a Christmas present ahead of Christmas and just give it to her. She's like, no, I want it wrapped up, and I want it to be a surprise, and I go, It'll be a surprise today if I give it to you, you know, like, <laughs> what's the difference if it's December 20th or December 25th, but it matters to her. I don't get that. So frankly, I give a shit if it gets leaked or not. Like, it, the game is still coming out. I'm so excited about it. And, you know, when you think about, like, Rockstar, Grand Theft Auto V was announced November 1st, 2011. Look that one up. And it came out September something, 13, 2013. September 17th, 2013, something like that. So two years, like, did it hurt sales? I sure don't think so. Um, so, I, you know, what, leak? I mean, I think leaks are great. I think, I think you want to announce a game and I think you want a steady stream of updates on the game. So Cyberpunk, my God, how long have we known Cyberpunk was coming? 
Actually, they announced it like six years ago. Yeah. And just never, they put out a trailer and it just disappeared for like four years. Yeah, but yeah. that's okay. Yeah. And so when did we next get information? A year ago, right? Yeah. Like last summer. Yeah. E3 2018. Right. So yeah. we get we got a lot of info E3 2018. We got a lot more E3 2019. It's coming out in 2020. Like, and do you think that's going to hurt sales? Like, so my bias is constant leaks. Like, more is better. And the cool thing about a leak is everybody talks about it when it happens. So I don't think leaks are bad at all. I, I just do not. Um, I get that, you know, the guy responsible for managing the buzz, the pizzazz of the announcement doesn't like it, but I personally think they're great for for consumer awareness. So funny that you asked that, but I personally don't care. My wife, on the other hand, leaks are bad only on Christmas, no gifts any other day. Our next question from Patreon from Elvis One Cat. I'd like to know your thoughts about Apple potentially buying Nintendo. I think the potential customers for Nintendo Apple games would be huge and it shouldn't be too hard to develop a detachable set of Joy-Cons for iPhones and iPads. I would say there's a zero probability of Apple buying Nintendo, but uh, I, th I, th I like how you're thinking. I think that Apple should partner with Nintendo. I don't think they need to own Nintendo. And if you paid attention to the Apple Arcade announcement at, at uh, that was earlier this week as well, um, the killer app for Apple Arcade is Nintendo DS games or GBA, GB, GB Color, Game Boy, Original. If you put every Nintendo handheld game on Apple Arcade, you could charge five bucks more. You could say five bucks for Apple Arcade and a second five dollars for access just to the Nintendo library and Apple could give Nintendo eight dollars out of every ten and still make a ton of profit. And I don't know how, I mean, I know that there are like 2,000 games or something. I don't know how many are actually Nintendo owned IP, but I'll bet, I'll bet there are 500, 700 great games made for GBA, Game Boy Color and, and DS that would be phenomenal as a five to $10 a month subscription and they would kill it. Do you need to own them to make that happen? Well, you might, because Nintendo might think this is the dumbest idea ever. But uh, I actually think, just from what I'm hearing from Nintendo, they're starting to think about life after the console. And the reality of streaming is that eventually you're not gonna buy a console. I mean, you're just not gonna need one. And if streaming becomes popular, we're just not gonna buy a dedicated device if you can play on your TV without a device. So Nintendo's gotta kind of figure out where they fit in that, that tech spectrum where people are streaming games, and the way to fit is to control the dialogue and create a subscription to your content that makes sense. And so, yes, would Apple do it that way? Sure. Do they need to own Nintendo to do it, or can they let Nintendo continue to have its console business for new games and have its arcade business for catalog? I think they can do both. And so, you know, frankly, I think they, they make sense together in partnership, but no, the company that should buy Nintendo is Disney. And Disney won't because they don't like games, but they should because think of the merchandising opportunity with Nintendo, think of the theme park opportunity which Universal is exploiting, think about the uh, movie opportunity with all those different Nintendo characters. There's so much value in that library of intellectual property that Disney would be foolish not to uh, snap them up, but you know, Disney's got other things to deal with right now. They're trying to roll out Disney Plus. I don't think this happens on Iger's watch. So wait till he's replaced and then maybe you'll see a move. Our last question this week comes from YouTube from A. I've always wanted to know what kind of watch you're wearing in your videos. Are you a watch person? So funny you should ask, because I am really a watch person. Um, the watch I wear is called a Zenith. And this is an El Primero Grande. And Zenith is one of the older watchmakers, but they're a Swiss watch company. Um, their claim to fame was they made the Rolex Daytona for Rolex until 2000. And Rolex, and the reason is that Zenith makes chronometers, and this is a chronometer, so it keeps really good time. Um, I wear it because it is the only watch that I know of that I'm absolutely certain nobody's ever heard of. 
And although you can look up the Zenith El Primero Grande and you'll see that it's not a, an inexpensive watch, but on my wrist, it's stainless steel. It looks like a Timex dive watch. So I know I'm wearing a nice watch and I don't really think anybody else cares. This is my watch collection. Uh, God, I don't know if I can do this. I don't wanna, I don't wanna break it. I'm gonna do it upside down. But that's, that's the first part of my watch collection. And oh, I, don't, I can't do this, okay, I'll have to do it. And I've got two drawers below it. Um, let me see if there's anything in here that's really cool. I've got tons of watches that are really cool. Um, where is my, I'm missing my best watch, here it is. All right, this is very likely the most expensive watch that I own. Um, and I didn't pay that much for it. I paid more for this than I paid for this. This is a, oh, I'm holding it upside down, I'm so sorry. This is a Patek Philippe Calatrava in rose gold from the 1940s. And just so you know what rose gold is, uh, and I always screw this up so anybody's free to look this up and correct me because I flip them around. Um, gold is hardened with, I want to say, zinc. Either I always get mixed up zinc or tin, but it's hardened with one or the other and that makes gold retain its gold color. I'm pretty sure it's zinc. And when you harden it with tin, it turns very slightly pink. So it's not yellow, they call it rose gold. So the reason this was hardened with tin, they didn't want to harden it with tin, but during World War II, the Nazis needed zinc to make artillery shells to shoot down British and US bombers who were bombing the crap out of them. And the Swiss, who were officially neutral, just allowed all the zinc production to go to the Germans to make artillery shells, and they hardened their gold with tin. So there was a few year period where Swiss watches were made out of rose gold. This is a cool watch, and the thing that's really cool is that you can't see it, but the second, the second hand register, so the little dots all around the outer rim, are mother of pearl inlay. So they're little dots of mother of pearl hand carved and put in. This is a pretty cool watch. This is my favorite of all my watches. I don't know why I keep it down there. Uh, what do I have in here that's... So I've got like three or four of these. This is a, this is a Tiffany & Company manual uh, watch from the 1940s made by Ebel. Uh, and Ebel... Let me see. Oh, I have like three or four Ebels, but... Um, can't find it in a bell. I do have another. Oh, here's another bell. This is the same company, a much more modern watch made by the same company. Um, then I have a Tiffany. I, know, I can't find all these. I have a Tiffany that's made by Movado. Oh gosh, I have too many watches. I think <laughs> one second, one second. Oh, here's a Movado. This is the original. You've seen the Movado museum watch, a little gold dot. This is the original. This is the first wow. one. I know this is really a cool watch. I only have it because it's a really cool watch. So this is this is the first new watch I bought ever. This is a Jaeger LeCoultre Reverso. The reason it's called a Reverso is the watch reverses and on the back of mine is just stainless. On others, there's a second face to the watch. Why would you get a watch that reverses to stainless? Because when you're out playing polo, an errant polo ball might strike your watch and break it. So you had to reverse it so that you would protect your watch from getting stricken. So uh, I thought this was a really fun watch and I bought it. Rich people problems. Uh, yeah, I've got rich, oh no, I'm saying it's, a, I thought the story was hilarious. Um, I think the coolest watch I own is an Hublot. And Hublot in French means porthole. So look at this watch, it looks like a porthole. Um, my my claim to fame here is that when he was coach of the Knicks, Pat Riley actually wore this exact watch. And this is a watch that's got a rubber band and it's fitted to my wrist. Um, that It's just a really cool watch. So if you ever want to, and they're not super expensive. If you want a cool watch, you get one of those. Um, my, my, my Gary Wedbush of Wedbush fame makes fun of me for this because 
he, he saw this watch, and I got this watch as a joke because my wife has a lot of diamonds. So Gary calls me Mr. Diamond and my wife Mrs. Diamond because my wife has a lot of diamonds. So I actually seriously bought this watch just as a joke because look at the face. There's <laughs> diamonds on the face. It is, it's a Ulysse Nardin, which is a nice watch, like spelled like U Ulysses with uh, no S at the end. Um, and again, I never wear it. I just bought it because Gary Webbish made fun of it. I have... I'll just show you side by side. I, I think I might have three of these, but these are both international watch company watches, and I definitely have three or four of them. I probably have four or five. These are, anyway, these are really old manual watches. I like International Watch Company. Um, international Watch Company was founded by a couple of Americans, believe it or not, and they wanted, they made pocket watches, and they wanted to move to Switzerland and learn how to make pocket watches. And of course they moved there and they stayed because they loved it. So it's called International Watch Company because it was formed by Americans in the 1790s or whatever, um, who decided to make watches and so they gave it an American name and then they stayed. Now it's all Swiss, of course. Uh, but that's a really cool one. I've got a, again, you can tell I, I favor the leather band manual. This is a uh, rose gold Piaget. And again, I love, I love nice watches. Um, again, just, it's a basic watch. Um, my wife bought me this one. I've got so many of these things. This is a, hold up, up right. This is a Blanc Pond, which means white bread. Okay, that's the name of the watch. All Blanc Ponds look like this. They all have the same rim around them. Um, they all are different complications. So this is a, a chronometer, but they're, they're, this is a fun, really old watch. Um, and I will show you, and I have all these like collector weirdo watches. This, which probably is, I probably destroyed. This is what's called a Concord Delirium. I think I paid $400 for this. So this is not particularly expensive, but pretty looking watch, right? Check this out. I think it's still in the Guinness Book of World Records. This is the thinnest watch ever made. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So it's really thin and I only bought it because it was the thinnest watch ever made and I thought it was cool. Um, I have about four of these dif different brands of this. This is a Le Coultre. The reversal I showed you was a Jaeger Le Coultre. Um, there they merged. Le Coultre, the, the face is lapis, so it's stone. You see the little blue around there painted with gold. The bezel, or not, you know, the whatever, crown, excuse me, is sapphire. And, and the band is blue. I just thought this was a cool watch, so I bought it. And again, it's just an old, you know, old school, probably 1940s. Um, I've got two Xiaomi watches. Oh, these might both be them. I've got a stainless and a gold Xiaomi. I love these watches. Sharp. They're beautiful. They, if just again, to have something to wear around. If it, I used to switch them all the time. Um, here's another Jaeger Le Coultre. Here's my only, um, my only Corum watch. Corum is a sailor's watch. I just thought this was really pretty, so I bought it. And here's my dad's watch, which I honestly, I will never wear this because my dad was like, uh, uh, and this is old school, tiny, tiny watch. I mean, look at it compared to that. But this is my dad's watch, it's all gold, and I just can't bear to like do anything with this, but keep it because it was my dad's. So anyway, I think I have some more, but that's, uh, that's what you're getting for Two today. Questions. Yeah. Two House is burning down. What's the one watch you take? I would just run out. I don't care. Thank you for joining us on the Pactor Factor on sifted.net. If you're watching real time and you're a Patreon patron, thank you for your patronage. If you are watching on YouTube because you choose not to pay on Patreon or can't afford it, and you're an Amazon Prime member, please remember to link your Prime account to your Twitch account. We get paid every time you resubscribe. That's easy instructions in the description. And if you are doing none of that, at a minimum, please follow me on Twitter, at Michael Pactor. Follow Shane at Dinfire. Follow Sifted at Sifted Games. We'll see you next week. Thanks very much. My first job, I'm really old. So my first job, my first bonus um, in 1985, because I am that old, I got a $5,000 bonus. And I, I I was probably making, I was doing well, I was, I was probably making 100,000 a year. And I got my Jeez. first time I ever got a bonus, I got five grand. And it was just found money, it was just extra money. And after taxes, I got like $3,500. And I remember getting the check and thinking, I always wanted a Rolex. And so I bought a stainless Rolex with a dark, 
uh, dark gray face and a and a white gold bezel the thing around it and i wore that watch for 15 years and wow. never took it off and then i uh, started buying watches because i thought it was so cool and i didn't actually give it to my brother-in-law first i gave it to my father-in-law first and then when my father-in-law died he actually left it back to me because he didn't think it was cool to take it and then i had i spent four hundred dollars the first time and eight hundred dollars second time getting it completely clean and rebuilt in a new spring and everything and I give it to my brother-in-law so um, I'm glad that we three members of our family have enjoyed that watch and uh, Rolexes are great I have nothing against Rolexes um, it's just that a Rolex is like a BMW like everybody has one and you know I'd rather have something nobody has so the answer to your question is Zenith so if you ever want to get a really cool watch and earn my respect Zenith. Oh, by the way, I saw, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jim Ryan at PlayStation wears a really cool looking, you know, just a gold watch that just looks like that on a leather strap. And I remember asking him at E3, I'm like, oh, is that an IWC? Oh, what is that? I like that watch. And he said it was his father's Rolex from 1963 that his mother had had some job back in 1963 and gave his dad the gift of a Rolex. And his dad's still alive, but his dad gave it to him and handed it down. And he wears it every day. And I thought that was really, really cool. So there's lots of people who are watch people. Great question, astute question. Uh, I've been doing these for 12, 13 years and no one's ever asked me about my watch. So yes, you just hit a button. So what am I good at? Watches, wine, and scotch. That's what I'm good at. I don't know anything about anything else, including video <laughs> games. Um, is that the end of our Packer Factor? Oh, That's yeah, yeah. Last one, um, yes, yes, I do have a collection to answer your question. And, uh, I, you know, I, I have a will. And I have in my will, uh, I'm leaving my watches to all my friends. And I've, but I haven't yet filled out the rider. So I have to figure out which one I'm leaving to Shane because oh, wow. he he will definitely out he will definitely outlive me, um, but I'm but I'm not going to ever sell a watch. I'm I'm leaving these to my friends. So uh, I'm going to make sure everybody who younger than me can enjoy at least a little bit of watch. So there you go.